Alrighty, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So, today we're going to continue on with the last video where we rebuilt the power head in this Yamaha 15. I suggest you go and watch that video if you haven't already so that you're completely up to scratch where what we're doing today. So, as those of you who watched the video would have seen, at the end of the video we did get it going uh, and it ran pretty crappy. Um, I wouldn't say it was running the best. Uh, believe it or not, I actually got it running a lot better once I'd finished filming the video. That's Murphy's Law. Uh, but uh, today I want to do a little bit of tuning on it. Uh, this is how I'm going to tune it. This one I'm probably going to follow the manual for. Uh, it's a bit of a complex system and how it works. But first we're going to start the engine and get it up to operating temperature uh, before we start tuning. Hoping the video quality is a little bit better. I've got a new phone, so we'll uh, give it a start. It was running just yesterday. Um, I did give it a test run beforehand so i know it does run so we'll see how long it takes to start whether i did it all right or not but uh, yeah here goes <laughs> motor's now up to temperature and the thermostat housing we're reading about close to 60 degrees blocks around 60 70 degrees give or take so she's it's still up to her temperature it's probably been running for about i don't know maybe three to five minutes now so the thermostat appears to be working good because it did heat right up and then cool uh start cooling down i think the thermostat housing got up to 62 64 maybe through this uh, compression gauge in now and see i will probably do about five pulls for each cylinder maybe then it's even we get a bit of a idea i'll do a full pull each time both plugs are out so it should be easy enough to pull over <laughs> So now we've got to hope that we get 105 on this bottom one. perfect I'm happy with that I could keep pulling and it will probably give me higher compression readings also if I was pulling on a tinny per se uh, I would probably get even higher readings because obviously this stand has a bit of wobble to it so I'm not getting the perfect amount of uh, pulls but I'm happy with those readings uh, they're well within 15 psi of each other so we're good to start tuning radio I'm gonna start now with uh, ignition timing. So this is very, very simple. Uh, on the manual, it's got all the specs and figures that you may need to adjust it if you do need to adjust it. But in today's video, I'm just gonna show you how to check it, make sure you've got it all right. So wide open timing. Obviously the motor will not rev to wide open throttle in neutral. So we have to put the motor into gear, advance our throttle all the way up till it gets to the 100% point on the throttle. You can see that the uh, advance here has moved all the way back and we want to move the engine according to the Yamaha manual so that this pointer here lines up with this line 30. That's 30 degrees before tap dead centre. That is our wide open timing mark to check our wide open timing. You'll see under here there's a little plastic piece, a little plastic ring with a uh, slider that comes out and attaches to this little pin and connector assembly which then attaches to our ignition timing lever on the end of this there's a little pointer which should line up with this little line on the bottom of the flywheel if these line up like this one this one is 
currently pretty much well perfectly aligned, your wide open ignition timing is bang on correct. Now we'll do is we'll check our idle timing. So we'll take the throttle back, put the motor in neutral, as we don't need to have it in forward anymore. And we'll roll the motor around until it gets to five degrees after top dead center. As you can see there, this one's gonna be a bit hard because the compression is gonna keep trying to push it away from where I need it. But uh, we'll line it up. I'll leave it there, that's pretty good. As you can see, we are perfectly lined up with five degrees. We have perfect top dead center, so that would be zero. We've got 10 degrees on this side, and obviously that small little mark in the middle is five degrees after top dead center. So we go back to our pointer over here and check. Does this little line match up with our pointer? Yes, it does. So there we go. We know that our ignition timing is correct for idle. If you have to adjust it, it is this little screw here. You wind it in and out. I did actually have to adjust this myself when I did this motor. Uh, that's why it wouldn't run correctly in the first video when we rebuilt it. Uh, was because that had been wound all the way out. So it was retarded timing. So I've advanced it up to where it should be. And it runs pretty good now. The way you're supposed to check it properly is to put a dial gauge indicator into there. The specs are in the manual if you need to. And you'll also need a special holder tool to hold your dial gauge in there while you're checking it because you do need to use a dial gauge to measure how far back your piston goes so you know it's perfectly uh, on the money where it needs to be before you start adjusting any of these linkages. Before we move on, however, I just thought I'd add these cables here. Make sure these are nice and tight. You may need to adjust these regarding the uh, what your motor uh, runs like. This cable uh, play will affect that. So make sure your cables are tight and if you need to, you may need to adjust them. These ones are actually set pretty nicely at the moment. I believe the manual spec for the torque on the cables is one, meet, one millimeter deflection. Uh, someone will correct me if I'm wrong. As you can see, that's very, very minimal. So the cables need to be pretty tight. The throttle still moves relatively easily, uh, but obviously we're getting a lot better throttle response. It's not all sloppy, so we don't have like that much play before the throttle starts acting. It's all direct feedback as soon as we move the throttle. So the last thing I'm gonna focus on with the motor stopped uh, is this little adjustment here. This just attaches our throttle butterfly to our wide open link. So this operates our butterfly. Uh, at the moment, you can see that this little stopper here doesn't actually contact the end of the idle speed set screw uh, bar, as you might call it. It should be touching the end of there, uh, as that would show that the engine's at wide open throttle, but it is not. So this engine probably will not reach wide open throttle when it's out on the water. And this is a lot of the problem with people's motors when they ask, oh, my motor won't rev all the way up. It, it sits at a certain RPM. It's got power, it, it goes good, it starts easy, runs really nicely, but it just won't rev right up. Check that. Make sure that your butterfly is opening right up. But because it's got that stopper, we know when it's going to be running at wide open throttle. So, if you do have a motor that's not got an airbox like this one, pull it off. Have a look at the butterfly. Make sure it's sitting exactly horizontal. When the motor's in forward, obviously, at wide open throttle, make sure it's sitting horizontal. Obviously, this one's not, as I said. So, what we'll do, we'll get a Phillips head screwdriver and we'll adjust that now. Loosen and off our screw. So, now what we're going to do, I'm going to put it in forward. Like so, river right the way up. And we're gonna move this with our throttle till we get to the wide open position, which is right there. So you see how much that moves right there. It was sitting about there before and look how much further we've got it. So that's quite a fair amount to be quite honest with you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock it up right there. So that it's perfect. That's not really too good. Still got a little bit of slop as you can see there. So we'll back it off again and get it to the point where it's bang on. 
sometimes you may have to hold the pin out with it as well and there we go that's pretty much smack bang on where it needs to be now what we'll do is we'll back the throttle off and we'll check where it's sitting with the idle right yeah cables are tight that's all adjusted as you can see we're now hitting the bump stop but we haven't compromised our idle either that's a result of this cable torque if you haven't torqued your cables and they're loose you'll get it either one way or the other so if you adjust this it'll either uh, be perfect on your wide open but it'll idle way high like it'll sit around there or if you haven't adjusted it uh, at all it'll idle good but it won't reach wide open throttle which is what i had before so we've adjusted all that and now we're getting a bit of both it'll idle perfectly it will sit perfectly on that idle set screw and now the motor will also reach wide open throttle because it's hitting that bump stop so this also brings me to the idle setting we may have to reset this being that we've just fiddled around with the motor a little bit um, obviously if you've reset this uh idle timing and your wide open timing you will have to reset everything uh, there's no doubt about that uh, because the motor will probably or not probably it will run very very different uh, depending on whether your timing's retarded or you've advanced it too much uh, or you've retarded it back to where it should be or advanced it like i did uh, you will need to retune your motor so now we'll get into tuning it with our low speed screw which is here and our idle set speed screw right motor needs to be going to do this so we'll restart the motor obviously make sure it's in neutral before starting it this one does have a uh, cord here attached to the pull starter which the manual says to also adjust. I'm not gonna to touch that. I don't wanna destroy what it's like at the moment. So we'll just start it up now. Might need a bit of choke. There's the gear there. We've got a little bit of lean sneeze. So this motor might need a little bit of a turn. Now that it's just because I didn't have the choke on when I went to start it up. As you can hear, the motor is idling a little bit high, so we'll drop this idle down a bit. It's also handy to give the motor a bit of a rev too. And see where it comes down to? Because sometimes when you're fiddling with that, if you rev it up and let it go back down, it'll idle much lower, or it could run much higher. As you can hear, it's sort of starting to drop down a bit, so pick it up and slide them out, it's a bit too high, drop it down, now the idle mixture screw here really only sets your, uh, what it says, idle, so this doesn't set your wide open, so at the moment it's running a little bit lean, it's kicking a bit, so we'll wind it out and slide them out, give it a rev, Where it drops to going pretty good to set this usually you go for where it idles the highest so i'll turn it in slowly until it starts to rev in here that didn't really change so I'll turn it out a bit wait a bit for it to respond it's starting to die so I'll turn it in a bit more. You can hear it start to pick up there. It's starting to die.
about there is where it picked up. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to reset my idle a little bit. I'll leave it there. Also hear how it comes back and it doesn't doesn't sit in an RPM and then drop, or it doesn't go drop and then raise back up again slowly. That means this run mode is running pretty much in its sweet spot. If the idle stays at a high idle and then drops down, generally it's running a little bit lean and you might need to richen it up a little bit on your idle mixture. But at the moment, that comes right back down and sits there. So I'm pretty happy with how this is running at the moment. Starts back up again. Same idle. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's running at the moment. Right, yeah, last thing I'm going to do is just test run it with the cowl on and see how it goes. Uh, this is a pretty big test because you may have to go back in and readjust it. It was pretty good. When I had it just before with the cowl off, with the cowl on, it might be a completely different story. Because obviously the cow's locking in, it's not allowing as much air as what can easily get through with the cowl off. So we'll see how it runs now with the cowl off. That's not too shabby. It's not the best, but... With the cowl on, it's not too bad. That actually idles pretty smooth. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing if you uh, liked the video. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.